Welcome to the All Out Leadership Podcast, hosted by Pastor Eric Lawson, where each episode is uniquely designed to help you live all out by bringing you practical leadership from a biblical perspective delivered in 10 minutes or less. So whether you're a business leader, serving in ministry, or simply looking to grow in your leadership, this podcast is for you. Before we dive into this week's topic, make sure to subscribe to the podcast and download the show notes at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast. And while you're at it, feel free to share the content on social media. Now, let's join Pastor Eric for this week's conversation. Welcome to another episode of the All Out Leadership Podcast. We've been looking at the life of David, that he was the gold standard by which God measured every future king in Israel. We know David is most famous as the giant killer. We all want to be giant killers. We all want to do giant things for God. But what were the little things that positioned David to become a giant killer in the first place? We often want the promotion. We just don't want the pathway to the promotion. And that's what we see as the path of promotion in the life of David. Number one, we saw that David knew how to show up. Number two, David was a good steward of what he had. Faithful in little will be faithful in much. Third, he was submitted to the direction of his father. God used imperfect leaders to put him in a perfect position. Submission is sub and then mission. When we submit, it puts us into the mission that God has for us. And number four, he was a servant. He was a genuine servant leader, and God uses servant leaders. We're going to pick up with number five. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32, David is talking to King Saul, and he says, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Number five is this. David was a problem solver. He shows up, he sees that there's this giant of a problem called Goliath, and he says, I'll solve this problem. David saw problems and solved it. You know, there's a lot of people who see problems, and they think it's their spiritual gift. They think that God has gifted them with the ability to see problems. Look, it doesn't take a spiritual gift to see when something's not working, to see when something's not right. There is no spiritual gift listed. When you look at spiritual gifts listed inside of ministry, there's not one called seen problems. <laughs> that's not there. Some people think that that's their ministry gift just to be the pointer in the church. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. There's no reward in heaven for it. There it is. There it is. There it is. There's no monument uh, in history created to the person who's just, there it is. There it is. There it is. In fact, history records and celebrates people who saw a problem, but had the ability to solve it. Now, something I share with our team all the time, uh, because from time to time, you know, staff will go, oh man, we got all these problems. And I go, that's great, because your job is to solve problems. In fact, we knew we had a problem before you knew we had a problem, and that's why we hired you. The church hired you because we have a problem in your jobs to solve it. I, I, I just find it amusing to me that staff somehow sometimes think we're going to reach some point where, hey, we don't have any more problems. This is perfect. No, no, no. Hang on. The day we no longer have problems, you got a problem because you don't have a job. Because your whole job exists because we have problems we need you to solve. So look, don't think you're better than your boss because you see all the problems. The boss pays you to see the problems and bring solutions and to be part of the solution to the problem. We have a statement uh, that's part of our culture here, and that is the church loves you for free but it pays you to solve problems. If you are employed (laughs) at any church or if you're employed at a company or business, look, they love you. The church loves you and we love you for free, but the church pays you or your boss pays you to solve problems. Secondly, problems are the pathway to promotion. The problem you see right now is actually your opportunity to great promotion. We want more privileges. We want more responsibility. We want to be used in greater ways. Well, the problem you have right now is actually a pathway. It's not a roadblock. It's actually a pathway to promotion. We see David use this principle uh, when he was looking to select a general to lead his army. In 1 Chronicles chapter 11, you can read the story. He wanted to take the city of Jerusalem. It was actually controlled by the Jebusites at the time. He wanted to make that his capital city, but it was a problem. It was a very fortified city. It was very difficult to to conquer uh, geographically the way it was positioned. And so he, he gave this announcement. He goes, look, I want that city. The man that can take that city will be the general of my army. So there was a man named Joab who goes, 
that's me. I want to be the general of the army. I'm going to solve that problem. So he took a small group of friends and he snuck through the sewers that were underneath that city, went through the sewers, came up in the middle of the night, was able to open the gate, and then they were able to conquer that city. And David, true to his word, Joab became the general of David's army. So here's some important principles. Your boss, your leader wants to take on some new territory, wants to launch a new product, wants to expand the market share. Maybe God's telling you, I want you to do this and I want you to take this for me. Um, Just like Joab, you might have to go through the sewer to take it. Now, I'm not going to fill in the blank as to what is in the sewer. You can probably figure that out because you're very intelligent. And I know you're intelligent because you're smart enough to listen to these podcasts every week and share them with your friends. So you can use whatever word you're comfortable to uh, define what you find in sewer systems. But Joab was willing to go through whatever was found inside of those sewer systems. He was willing to go through a lot of doo-doo to take the city. It's the people who are willing to go through the doo-doo, all the stuff, to take on that city, that they're the ones who get promoted. You know, there's a lot of people who think their whole job is problem avoidance. No, your job is to take those problems, solve it, and take that city. Also, your pay is in direct proportion to the problems you solve. I meet people, pastor, I I need a raise, or they go to their boss, "I, I need to make more money. And unfortunately, we have this entitlement mentality that's crept into our culture over time. And that is because I've worked here two years now. I'm entitled to a raise. In the old days, people would be given raises based on tenure, like, you know, automatically you were here for five years, so you get another raise. Really, today's culture and across the board, it really doesn't work that way. Economically, it's very difficult for a business to sustain that anyway. And this is actually a much better principle of leadership. Your pay is in direct proportion to the problem you solve. In other words, you can't get paid $50 an hour solving $10 an hour problems. Just because you worked there 50 years doesn't mean you need to make $50 an hour. There comes a point, the problem you solve is only worth X amount. Your boss can't really pay you more than that. So if you want more pay, it's really simple. Solve bigger problems. So the bigger problem you solve, the more valuable you become and ultimately the greater income. So you're a company. Find big problems that your customers have. Solve it. You'll make more money. You're an employee. Find your boss's biggest problem. King Saul's biggest problem was this giant. David was able to solve the problem no one else could. And as a result, he became very wealthy. Uh, He was given the king's daughter and there was promotion that came with it. Now, here's just a couple fun facts about problems uh, as I close out this podcast. If you don't see any problems, chances are you're the problem. I'm just going to let that sink in because that's really good. If you don't see any problems, you're sitting here going, well, I don't see any problems. I'm not sure this podcast applies to me. Just just know this, then (laughs) you're your boss's problem. Uh, Or you're the boss and you're everybody else's problem as a boss if you can't see the problems. Secondly, if you never have a solution to the problems, that's a bigger problem. (laughs) It's it's one thing to see, see problems, but man, if you aren't bringing solutions to the table, that's a problem. Uh, I I always made it a principle when I was working for someone else that whenever I brought a problem, I always brought two to three potential solutions with it. Don't go hit your boss with problems. Hey boss, we got a huge problem. Okay. Thought you'd want to know. Enjoy your vacation. (laughs) Secondly, when you present your problems, timing is critical. Okay. Don't tell your boss about the major problem right before they're going on vacation or at the end of their work day or on their day off or right before they're getting ready to go out and preach a sermon, FYI. Okay, third thing is this. If all you see are problems, then that is the biggest problem. If you can't see anything good, then that is even a bigger problem. Look, no matter how many things are wrong in your company or in your business, chances are there's more right than there is wrong. And there are just times you got to step back and you feel overwhelmed by a problem. Maybe there's something inside of the culture. Maybe there's a benefit problem. Maybe there's, you know, time management problems, whatever it is, step back and go, okay, I'm going to count the good things about my boss. I'm going to count the good things about my church. I'm going to count the good things about where I'm at because chances are you'll see far more good than bad. And then it helps give you perspective to actually be better at solving that problem. What I see about David as we close is this. Little minds talk about the problem. Israel was talking about the problem. Goliath came out twice a day. Everybody would talk about it. 
David was different. He didn't talk about the problem. We see that he talked to the problem. He ran out there and said to the Philistine, today I come at you in the name of the Lord. Stop talking about your problem. Start talking to your problem. Be a problem solver. Look forward to seeing you next week as we continue in the life of David on some more principles that positioned him to become a giant killer. And again, we encourage you, share this podcast with some friends, some colleagues, some employees. Look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you for joining us on the All Out Leadership Podcast. We hope you gain new biblical insight that challenged you to grow in your leadership. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, we would love your help in getting the content out farther. You can help by subscribing to the podcast at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast and telling others about it. Next week, Pastor Eric will be back with another episode. So until then, we hope you have a great week being an all out leader.